Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying Living in Awe of God, a series from the book of Exodus. In this session, we'll be looking at Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 13, the plagues of Egypt. We want to look at the plagues of Egypt to see what they tell us about God and about how he works with men. The term plague is always compared to these plagues. When people speak about speak of disasters of biblical proportion, it's the 10 plagues of Egypt that, they're, that are being referenced. Let's look at our text, Exodus chapter 7, beginning with verse 8. And then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. And so Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before, before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. The first sign is the stage for us. Introducing the players, God, Pharaoh, Moses, and Aaron, as well as the magicians of Egypt. God works through human agency, but God is the principal character of this text. It was God who would mock the false gods of Egypt. It was God who would use the plagues to make his name known in all the earth. It was God who would execute judgment on Pharaoh and all of Egypt. And there's three things to observe about the plagues. First, the plagues of Egypt were miraculous. I believe those plagues were all miracles. I believe God reached into time and space, took charge of nature, and did supernaturally what otherwise could not have been done. God displayed his sovereign power over all of creation. And here are four reasons we can be certain the plagues were actual, excuse me, miracles. The text itself, verses uh, seven, verses three through five. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt but Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The language is clear. God was going to do the miraculous. God himself explicitly declared that he was going to do the miraculous. And then look at the command of Moses and Aaron. According to the biblical account, Moses and Aaron were able to begin the plagues and stop them. If they had been just severe versions of otherwise natural occurrences, they would have, had, they would have come on slowly and left just as slowly like a rainstorm or clouds that pass over, bringing rain. Then the extent of the, of the plagues. The biblical account clearly demonstrates that they were in no way normal. In fact, Pharaoh's magicians saw the third plague as the finger of God. Exodus chapter 8, verse 19. And then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard. And he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. Native Egyptian magicians could tell that the plagues were not natural phenomena. Why should moderns 
millennia later, overrule the opinion of observers on site at the time. And then the, the exemption of the Hebrews. Several of the plagues, darkness, boils, gnats, death of livestock, and the death of firstborn only affected the Egyptians. They did not affect the land of Goshen where the Hebrews lived. The cattle of the Egyptians died, but not one of the cattle of the Israelites died. It would take faith to believe that natural phenomena or disease are geographically or ethnically discriminating. The plagues were miracles. They were not natural events. They were miracles performed by God at a specific time, in a specific place, and for a specific purpose. Second, the plagues of Egypt were meaningful. They had a purpose. Let's examine a couple of God's purposes. They demonstrate the futility of false gods. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Each of the plagues were designed to demonstrate the futility of worshiping false gods. They were designed to show the Egyptians that they could have no confidence in their false gods. Ancient Egyptians worshiped the Nile as a giver of life. When God turned the water to blood, it became a flow of death. Frogs were the Egyptian symbol of fertility, but the Lord took their symbol of life and turned it into a picture of death. The Egyptians worshipped Senehem, who was supposed to protect Egypt from pests by sending locusts to devour all the crops. God showed them that Senehem had no power. The plague which struck the livestock dead was another blow against the pagan deities. Hathor was the cow-headed mother goddess. She was powerless. The plague of darkness was an attack on Amon Re, the personification of the sun and chief deity of the Egyptians. He had no power to make the sun to shine. They reveal also the Lord and make him known. God wants his chosen people to know who God wanted his chosen people to know who was redeeming them from slavery. It wasn't Moses or Aaron, and it wasn't some freaky weather system that would cause Pharaoh to give up. God used the plagues to let the Hebrews know that he was their God. God used the plagues to demonstrate to the Egyptians that there is only one God, the God of the Hebrews. Look at Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you, Pharaoh, up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. God used the plagues to reveal himself to people who otherwise never could know him. And they proclaim that sins have consequences. Exodus chapter 9, verse 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the, rain, that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more, and he hardened his heart, he and his servants. The plagues were punishment. God used them to deal with Pharaoh for his stubborn and hard heart. You can't disobey God without suffering consequences. Your sins will affect more people than you realize. James chapter 1, verses 13 down to verse 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one of us is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, 
when it is full grown, brings forth death. The plague should serve as an example to all of us that we can't sin and get away with it. Sooner or later, our sins will catch up with us. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And then third, the plagues of Egypt were merciful. Someone is asked, why all the theatrics? Why didn't God just cut to the chase and kill the Egyptian firstborns to begin with? God could have killed all the Egyptian dead in one strike. Why didn't he? Well, the answer is that God is a merciful God. The plague started relatively mild in intensity with the annoyance of water into blood, frogs and gnats. When Pharaoh would not relent, God turned up the heat. The flies devastated the land, followed by the death of the livestock and the festering boils on all living things. When Pharaoh would still not relent, things got even worse. The hail came and destroyed the crops. The locusts came and ate everything else. And darkness covered the parts of Egypt where Egyptians lived for three days. It was so dark that it literally stopped people from even leaving their houses. It was within God's mercy that he went through nine plagues before he began killing Egyptians with the 10th plague. God is a merciful God, one who gives us chance after chance after chance to repent. He takes no delight in death. Ezekiel 33, verse 11, the first part of it. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. The plagues began with the misery sin brings, and they ended in death, where all sin eventually leads. They should speak to each of us about the length to which God will go to get our attention. Time after time, he speaks to us to get our attention, to show us that we should surrender our lives to his control. Like Pharaoh, sometimes amid our pain, we repent only to turn stubborn again once the pain is gone. There came a time in Pharaoh's life and there will come a time in the life of each person who willfully walks in disobedience when God will say, enough. Then it will be too late. Then there will be no turning back. What is it that God is telling you? What decision do you need to make that you've been putting off? What will it take to get your attention? You answer those questions and you have a great day.